Hi, this is the Zipper Lady, and this is the long explanation of how to put a zipper in two towels to make a roller towel that I did the quick one for last Friday. And here it is, it's just top stitched in. I've shortened the zipper this way. All you need is a separating zipper and a couple of towels, or a yard and a half of some sort of toweling. Um, an old used bath towel, there's all kinds of things you can do with this. This is something, and I, I'm not sure I remember where I got this, but this is uh, an antique toweling, um, it's probably new antique toweling. Um, back in the olden days we used roller towels, which just meant that you made it in a circle and then you just rolled it down, whatever it was attached to, which could be the um, handle of your oven, and you would just roll it down until you had something clean to wipe your hands on. And then once you got all the way around the yard and a half, um, then you unzip it and put it in the washing machine. And so all this is is a yard and a half of this yummy toweling, and I just put a zipper at the bottom of it. So all you need is a yard and a half of toweling, a couple of towels, and a separating or a jacket zipper so that these will separate like this. You can pull it off of the uh, handle on your oven and throw it in the washing machine. I've actually started to use these two at the warehouse and I used an old French rod sample that I had and they work pretty good too there. Uh, so anyway, all we're gonna do is, is we're gonna do two things today. I have two towels and we're going to top stitch the zipper in and then on the other side where we attach the towels we're going to do a flat felled seam. It will take me longer to explain this to you than for you to actually sew this. Uh, these are 10 minute gifts and I'm giving them to all my friends this year and my brothers um, and I'm including a lemon loaf and a cookbook so that they have something fun as well as something homemade. So all I did was, is I, I just have this zipper that was laying around and it's kind of red, it's not the same shade, but honestly I think it's gonna be fine. And so I pinned it and this is the right side of the, the towel and you can tell by where the seam allowance is and how it's it's pulled to the back and stitched. And so we're going to use the right side of the zipper, right side of the terry cloth, but we're going to sew it from the back side. And so what I did was is that I pinned it at this end of the terry cloth towel and at this one. Now I'm going to take it apart. And then what I'm going to do is, is that I'm just going to turn this over and pin it, and you can use clippies too, but I'm going to pin it just so that you won't see the zipper on the right side. And it's okay if you have a little bit of a bump over the zipper, um, like this one is, because what's going to happen is, is that the first time you wash it, see how it's got just that little tiny bit of a bump? The first time you wash it, it's going to flatten right out because it's going to shrink. So I'm just going to pin this along. Um, my own particular preference is for pins only because my sewing machine will go over the top of them. Um, clippies I have to pick up, but it depends on what day of the week it is and if I have extra needles or not. What I do as far as pulling the pins as I go. I've had a lot of people tell me that they don't like titanium needles, but I have to say that I really enjoy titanium. They seem to stay sharper longer, and me being the cheap person that I am, um, I keep an emery board in my drawer of my sewing machine, and what I do is is that. If I get to a point where my needle's got a little bit of a burr on it, instead of changing it, I just take my emery board to it, especially if I'm in the middle of a job. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of zoom in here just a teeny bit. 
and see maybe this will help up a little bit turn this light down here maybe maybe not there we go it's really crazy when you start sewing it's totally different than if you actually you're photographing yourself so let's try this one on too Ooh, much brighter okay um, so what we're gonna do is is that I'm gonna put it under the foot I'm just using my regular two-toe you can use whatever you want my machine needle goes back and forth and so I'm actually going to move my machine needle because I don't want my foot to get hung up on my zipper I'm going to start about an inch down from the side of the towel and I'm not going to backstitch and you'll see why in just a minute because we're going to shorten it from this end I'm just fudging it a little bit there we go watched me sew before you know that I use my fingers um, kind of like an embroidery hoop if it wants to buckle up I stretch it from the back hang on to it from the front so that I'll lay in there nice and flat Now this side, this has got the pin on it. On this side I'm going to go over the plastic and then I'm going to back stitch. And remember if I was using red thread, you wouldn't see this at all. See how tidy that is on the other side? Now You can very easily draw a line if you need to. When I trim my threads, I always start from the right side and trim it first. Then I pull it through to the back side. So there's no little bits of thread left. Now to shorten the zipper you can do it a lot of different ways. This is my favorite way though. I do something that I call a bar tack at the top and then I fold the zipper in and hide it underneath the rest of the zipper like that so I'm going to bar tack right here which is the end of my zipper and I'm going to actually pull it in just a tad needle to the center widest zigzag so a bar tack is just a tight zigzag so I'm going to do a zero stitch length and my widest zigzag. And basically all this is going to do is it's going to stop the top of the pull so it doesn't go popping off. Cut the thread. And then what I want to do is I'm going to cut this off about this much just so that I can kind of fudge it, play with it. And yes, I fudge pretty much everything I sew. So I want it to come under like this. And I want to hide everything underneath the other part of the tape. And I'm going to take a couple of stitches out just so I have a little extra room in there. You never know how tight or how um, non-flexible the zipper is going to be. Oh, that's good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to fold this part of the tape over. You could definitely cut it, but every time I cut something, it's always 
I shouldn't have, so I try not to cut anything. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin this And see how all my tape is under there? I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to pull the rest of that tape under there as much as I can just so that it's pretty. And you'll feel the rest of the zipper under here. And so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to start sewing here. I'm going to back stitch right here. Then I'm going to come across it and down. And then I'm going to do another set of stitches right here. And it's just to control the end of it. And I'm kind of feeling my way to figure out where the uh, coil on the zipper is underneath. There we go. And so I kind of hand roll it. So there's one. Start from the top. Cut the threads. Now I'm going to sew over here and hopefully I can feel the coil there and so I'm going to go right down the side like that and miss the coil. That's it. That's all you need to do. You're done with one side of your zipper. You're going to give it a couple of quick clips on all the threads. And there it is. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. First off, we're going to put our zipper back together again. Pull this back. This, by the way, is called the bayonet or the pin. And this is called the box. And the bayonet or the pin fits into the box. And then you zip up your zipper. And there is a little tiny spot where, let's see if I can get this apart so you can see it. Right on the side of the bayonet, there is just a teeny, teeny little tooth. And that little tooth has to fit right there on this bayonet inside of the box. And if you don't get the pull all the way up, they don't, you can't get it in tight. There we go. And it won't zip up. And that's how you break your jacket zip zipper too. So now I'm just zipping it up as far as I can go. And then I'm going to take my other towel, face side up, Lay it on top of this one. Line up the stripes right there. Line up the edge. Ouch. I'm trying not to stab myself and bleed. Then I'm just going to go down to the other side and do the exact same thing. So I'm lining up these edges, putting a little pin in it, and then I'm going to line up the stripes and put a pin in it. Then I'm going to take the zipper apart and stitch it on the back again.
So this side I'm, time I'm going to um, have the head with the pull attached that I got to deal with. So I'm going to slide it down a little bit. Again, I'm going to move my needle so that I can just run over the top. And that box right there is going to protrude just a little bit. So you got to go around it too. Back stitch. I'm going to pull the pin from the underneath side. And line up my coil with the side of the towel. Now I left my needle down. I'm going to pull this pin because there's a pin right there. Pull the head back and keep going. Usually when I've got stripes, I try to, to uh, sew right up to the pin just so that I have control of where the, the sewing machine is going to go over the top of the stripe. Now if you notice, I'm off a little bit over here, so I'm pushing it back. This pin is in the wrong spot, so I'm going to go right to my finger and then adjust it come right down to this end and I'm going to cut this off well I think I am there we go cut it off tuck it under and notice I'm making it so that let me zoom in here a little bit maybe you can see this better see how where my coil is right here. It's just back of where the pull is going to run. I'm going to have to cut off just a little bit more so I can tuck it under there. I have to tell you, sewing, the biggest mistake I make is to cut something off before I should. And so just so that you know, I run scared all the time. My tape's sticking out. I want to stick that back in. I've got a feel for where my coil is. And I'm just going to come up, back stitch. I'm going to go ahead and bar tack it at the top again. But I just want to hang on to it. Come on. There we go because I want to get rid of this. Oops, I lost it. Crumb. And yes, I should have pinned it. I'm not going to cut my threads, I'm just going to pull them out to the side so that they don't get caught underneath. I'm actually going to start, I'm going to leave the pin in and start past the pin so I don't have to mess with pulling it. Whoop! Not going to happen. Okay, so now I'm hitting the coil underneath, so I'm just going to pick it up and walk it over. Still hitting it. Ah! That's the fiddly part right there. Done deal. Now we're going to come over here and we're going to bar tack it right here. Done. 
Now all I have to do is cut all the threads, which I won't torture you and make you watch. Now then on the other side, flat filled seams are just like in your Levi's. And I, you can do it from the front or you can do it from the back. I'm going to do it from the front this time. I mean from the back rather. And I'm only going to pin hopefully across my stripes. So that after I sew it, my stripes will match. And what I'm doing is I'm looking inside to align my, let me see, there we go. I'm looking inside to align my stripes. Let me pull back out just a little bit so you can see that. So I'm just looking inside, aligning it, and I'm going to sew in about an inch and a quarter from my edge of my towel that's been stitched because I'm going to cut that off. There I am again. Now you can mark it. Uh, use something indelible. Oops. Having the camera on my chest every now and then I get a little carried away. So I know, because I have this piece of painter's tape here, that if I cut it here, or sew it here rather, I can cut this off and I have enough for my flat felt seam. Or if I go here, I don't have quite enough, and so I'm just going to eyeball it right down the middle of the painter's tape. And remember when I sew, I start in and then back up. If you can't sew a straight seam and it's something you're practicing on, you won't believe this. I think I just ran out of bobbin. Bah humbug. After being an upholsterer for way too many years, my hands are beat. I have no feeling in my fingers. So changing bobbins is kind of challenging. All right, there's my lineup. Off we go. So back to what I was saying is, is that if you can't sew a straight line, just remember not to follow the needle, but to follow, I have a little slot in the middle of my foot, and that's what I try to line my line up with. So if my line was right here, I would line the little slot up. I don't watch the needle, I watch the foot. Oh, that's ominous. Okay, now these edges are not going to line up, and so I'm going to fudge this. And what I do is, to make these line up, is I'm going to push the top edge back just a little tiny bit. Clip my threads. That's pretty close. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to cut off
And I usually cut one side at a time just because I'm paranoid. And I'm just going to cut that seam that came in the towel. And I'm going to cut that off on the top and then I'm going to cut it off on the bottom. And my scissors are getting caught in the terry. And so it's probably easier to open it up a little bit so that you don't have the terry. Cut my extra threads. Now I'm going to cut the hem or the seam out of the bottom of the other towel. I just turned it over and I'm going to clip this. And then flat filled seams are really easy. All you do is cut off one side of the seam, a little bit shorter than the other one. And the paranoid person I am, I'm going to cut this side off. I have folded this down. And I'm going to cut this off at about half or less than what this seam allowance is. Honestly, there is no right answer to how wide this needs to be. The thing that guides me is what it takes to tuck it in, because I'm going to tuck this over the top, like that, fold it, and then top stitch it. That's all a flat felt seam is. Look at your Levi's. And I have found that in terry cloth I like an inch and a quarter so that I can cut the one side of the seam down to a quarter and then I have enough fluffy terry cloth that I can fold it in and not fight it. And if you haven't made a flat felt seam, this is perfect to to uh, practice on because if they love you they're not going to tell you that it isn't straight okay so now I've got this one that's cut at about a quarter of an inch this is at an inch and a half I'm going to fold this up tuck this down along that seam allowance the hardest part to do was to get it started and so I'm going to pin this and then I'm going to work up here on the edge which counts because somebody's gonna see that. So see how I've got it all tucked in? Again I'm gonna start back from the edge, give it a stitch, and then I'm gonna go backwards. And I'm pulling the towel out this way and tucking in as I go and just stitching right along that. So you can feel my hands going this way. Then I'm looking to check. I'm matching my stripes as I go. So you can see what my fingers are doing. I'm pulling across, tucking, tucking, sewing. Now then, I'm coming to an edge. 
So I want to stop about halfway and adjust that edge so that it's pretty. And I'm going to fold it in just a little tiny bit from the edge and then fold it over and pin it in that same spot that I always pin right before the edge. And I, I pull it back just a little tiny bit so that when I have the walk from the needle, hopefully it's not going to walk it. If not, you can stop and push it back. I'm not sure how long that took, but your Christmas present is made. All you have to do is work a little bit on your threads and the lemon bread that goes with it. That's it for now. Just remember that it's not about the finished product. It's about the adventure to get there. Go out, make a few of these, make a couple of the mistakes for yourself. And um, I hope that this is a very special time of year for you. It is for me. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and we'll see you on Friday. Ta for now.